Hello, this is Karen Broadhead, and I'm so excited that you're here because you're here for a good reason. You're here because you are interested in mom power, having more power as a mother. It is all about your mom power calendar. Now, this is one of the coolest tools in mom power because it helps us remember who we are and whose we are. It helps us to remember that we have a divine identity and purpose, and that we also have an enemy who is constantly trying to mislead us so that we misinterpret and don't connect with our identity as divine, incredible daughters of God. And the reason that he doesn't want us to feel like our identity is locked in and we know that it is not even tied to our performance. It just is. We're just worthy. We're just more than enough because of who we are as daughters of a loving God who created us to be successful and fortified that truth with a plan for success and loved us so much that he gave us a savior to care for us and help us and tie himself to us so that we're tethered to him to be victorious over all that is heavy and hard and dark in this life because Heavenly Father knew they're going to need a Savior to have saved them because even though they're incredible and so good, because their natural girl, that natural man tendency is tied to their mortal experience, um, they are going to look super messy a lot. They're always going to feel like, I wish I could do better. My value system says I should do better, but my natural girl continues to not do better. <laughs> and Satan uses that to just mess with us, to tell us that we're dumb, that we're not, that we're not good, that we could be better, that we don't do enough, that what we do do is really weird and it doesn't work anyway. And um, he also uses the way other people do or don't listen to us or um, the way people show up and try to associate with us and love us in their weakness and that's broken too and so anyway our identity could just get really kind of mixed up so the mom power calendar is to help us remember that if we want to have the power that god said is ours that we can claim then we need to do it on purpose and the way we do that is to do six things that we try to remember every day and I want you to be sure to just notice, as I'm saying, here's what the mom power calendar is. Um, you need to consider where you're at, how you feel, what you're going through, and um, know that my mom power calendar is supposed to feel purposeful, powerful, peaceful, and it's supposed to also push me, but not push me in a bad way push me in a remembering way. Okay, so it's kind of like setting goals, but it's not really like setting goals because they're all things that we should be doing already because it's who we are. And because we know there are already things that we've been asked to do, but they just get off of our radar because we get super busy and distracted. All right, so you have um, a printout of your mom power calendar and you can look at that and you also have all these instructions and words that you can read. So I don't want you to think that this video is all the information you need. It's just me looking in your eyes and saying, this is worth it. This tool changed my life. And when I um, figured out how to make this tool work for me, instead of me working for the tool, it became something powerful that I know I can use as a tool to keep me awake. There are usually are two kinds of women personalities um, that look at this calendar and they take it two different ways. And since, uh, since the adversary knows that about us, he'll say, this girl, she loves doing things awesome. In fact, if she doesn't do them awesome, then she is kicking herself all day long because she's kind of like a perfectionist. She likes to do things perfect and she likes to do them often and well. And if she doesn't do it and keep on it, then 
it will kind of just shut her down. Okay, so he knows if a woman lives at that place, um, that's a strength. She has a strength there. People need that strength. They need the strength that says, man, I play high and I play hard. Um, and then there's another extreme. It is the extreme of, you know what? I play more peaceful. I play more, uh, I'm more connected to just noticing and watching and, and wondering. But I also care deeply and I want to stay connected with my identity. Um, but whenever I start checking boxes or tracking how I'm doing, it just shuts me down because I already think I do enough stuff and it becomes overwhelming and I don't want to do all that stuff and I'm already tired. So why would I add another thing to my list? So that actually, that woman is a strength too because this woman is the kind of woman who has the kind of gifts who she can like, because she's more of a, I like to stay in this place where I'm thinking and noticing and feeling things and stuff. She's a noticer. She sees people um, and she can consider things uh, and she can, if she's in her right mind and the spirit is with her, um, she has really amazing gifts that help people remember who they are. But when she tries to be like this lady um, that has so many strengths, we need a woman like that who says, I know how to play fast, I know how to play hard, and I can go high. And you need me on your team because that's how you get things done. And this woman over here says, I know how to think of things, I know how to do things, but I do them kind of slow and kind of weird, but I know how to do it. And I have lots of things I care about, and um, my life is pretty great. But if I try to be that girl, um, I go crazy. And if this girl tries to be that girl, she goes crazy. Because both of them, that's not who they are, but we need both kinds and everything in between. But you probably can identify with, I'm kind of this girl, or no, I'm kind of this girl. Both of them are awesome. But the adversary knows if you're this girl that's really high and extreme, he's gonna want you to notice that this calendar is stupid because this calendar is not cool because they're not even trying to do stuff. They're just saying it's like little stuff, do little things on purpose that you already know. Like girlfriend, you need a calendar that tells you to do 10 more things and tells you to do the 10 things that you're already doing really good, even better, because you're already at a high level, okay? But that takes us away from our divine identity and purpose. Because your divine identity says, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do things at a high level like that. But I'm also supposed to feel peaceful and powerful, not wired and over the top and managing all things and feeling a lack of peace because everything's so high in me and I expect everything to be high in other people that I love. So that can torment us. That's how Satan torments us there. But over here, um, Satan's going to tell this woman, that calendar is going to freak you out. It's going to drive you crazy because if you do that, then all it is is it's a piece of paper that's proving what a loser you are. Why would you sign up to have a piece of paper to tell you you're a loser uh, because you don't do stuff? And so you'll think, I'm not going to do that because I want to do that. But when she is in her right mind and she knows that the reason I have a paper is to remind me that um, not that I work for this paper and it bosses me around and tells me I'm a loser. It's because I, I feel so deeply and I care so much about the promises I've made uh, to always remember important things like Jesus Christ, like my promises to him, and that we're tethered together and I love his name, that I love it so much that it's in me, it's on me, I've taken it upon me. I love that. I love that guy. I care so much about that, that I want to remember, and I get distracted. So I love this paper because it helps me remember on purpose what I'm doing right. And this woman, she's saying, hey, look at me. I am able to play awesome and high at this level, but this keeps me in a perspective where I'm noticing, hmm, is that strength becoming a liability or am I keeping it in a lovely place? I don't want a liability, I want lovely. 
when I'm in this place. I want to feel like peaceful here. Okay. So oh, when you open up your alarm power calendar, I do want you to know uh, that initially that'll be the alarm that goes off is really, you have to do this, this class. Some of you are going to be like, hot dog, I love doing stuff like that. And others are going to be like, huh? oh no, I'm going to be terrible at this class. I don't know if I can do this class because I'm just not good at stuff already. And now people are going to see me be really dumb at this. There is no judgment. None, 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 none. This is your calendar. Okay. And there will be some accountability feelings in the class because when you come, it's a, a reminder that, hey, remember what we're trying to remember. And we're all trying together, but we're just noticing where we're at. And our goal is to not let the adversary pull us out of our truth. And our truth is that we have a divine identity and a divine purpose. And we don't let some old man tell us that our strength over here um, needs to be this high. So we're that cool because that takes us out of our divine identity. We're just supposed to be super awesome like that because God needs women like that in his army. Women that say, oh, is that what you need? I can get that for you. Oh, is that what you need done? I know exactly how to make that happen. I know how that looks and I love it. I can eat that for breakfast. We need people like that. Um, this woman over here, be sure uh, she's going to be taken right out of her identity because Satan says, hey girl, um, you don't want other girls to see that you don't have it together because you kind of know you don't. And so both of these girls say to an enemy, dude, you're messing with the wrong mom. I know that my life is to just be on purpose. It's not supposed to be perfect. I also know that I have my own special gifts and there's a reason why I'm on one end or the other. And it's because God needs all types of people to perform his work. And for us to do all these important missions to build his kingdom, he needs us all and he needs all kinds of women and all their strengths. And so just know as you come in that this calendar is just gonna be so wonderful. You're gonna love it. This calendar is for you to, it's your to make this calendar work for you. Uh, you don't work for this calendar. So notice the level you're at and notice that even though there are six things that you track on your calendar, that um, you can start with one, you can start with three, you can do just four and then work up to whatever it is. But always start with the discerning ones first. Because one of the first things that we need whenever we're trying to be aware of our behavior and notice it and hear our truth, wake up more to our identity and our purpose. Because this calendar is, isn't about being perfect, it's about restoring the identities and pieces of our identity that have been stolen from us that we've kind of forgotten because the adversary is super good at what he does and we're going to learn what he does and how he does it and how to defend ourselves in mom power. So it's hello. Uh, this calendar is to help me restore my identity. It has specific things in this calendar about my identity and it's also to help me remember my purpose. And I notice things in your life that are going right. When I notice things in my life that are going right on purpose, like these little teeny things on this mom power calendar, I start noticing, wow, I used to only think about everything that was going wrong. This calendar is training me to notice what's going right. And when I do that, I notice what's going right with the people I like. And that helps them so much uh, to not just point out things that we want them to do better. We wish they were doing different. And um, hadn't we told them that if they did it like this, that would work. But to just be like, you know what? You're awesome. And this is supposed to be messy. You're really messy. You're supposed to be messy and I'm supposed to be messy. But if we remember that we're just supposed to show up on purpose and remember what we promised and then trust God when he says my grace is sufficient and that, that it, my grace, um, is made strong in your weakness. And so we gladly celebrate uh, the fact that we are weak because um, we want his strength to be with us. That's really literally our goal is to say this power calendar is to help me remember 
that I'm weak and that I'm supposed to be and that messes are normal and life is supposed to be stormy and storms usually never go away. There's always one flying around somewhere, usually several. And we don't need to be tormented by that when we know, oh, that's normal. M-O-M-P-W-R. Those are the six areas. Mom, power. And the first um, M stands for my savior. That's where my power comes from. I am never alone. He is the only one that can save me and anybody I love. So when I, uh, that first little goal or that you set is just about your savior. Keep it. That's where, that's what we're trying to do in our life. Remember my savior. The second one is your O square and it is on your field. So it's like on your field, sister. This is your field. This is nobody else's field. And most of our lives, we don't even know it. But we didn't even know we had a field. We didn't even know we had a battlefield. And that we could claim it and say, this is my field. Instead, the adversary tricked us. Um, not because we were dumb. Just because we weren't aware. But he said, uh, every time you lose control of you or get in a place of extreme fear, because there are so many scary things in your life, that you don't know what to do about, and you can't feel the, the peace, can't find it, um, um, I am pulling you on to my field. Whenever I get pulled onto the adversary's field, um, I lose. I lose. Uh, it's because I forget. I forget what my weapons are. I forget who I am. I forget why I care. I forget why I'm fighting. I forget um, why I don't want to give up, and I give up, and I just I end up getting wounded and laying on the field, just giving up, like, oh, it's so painful and hard, and I just can't get it right. And when people are watching me, I can show up and act like, I'm not on the field wounded, I'm good. But as soon as I get home and I shut my door, and all those people are out there, I think, what is wrong with me? Like, on the inside, I feel like I'm a, a walking dead person with my eyes open. When I'm out there, I'm acting like, I'm good, I'm not wounded, I'm, I'm, I'm living the dream, baby. But what's really happening is, I have this great disconnect because I, I've been pulled onto the adversary's field so many times, and every time I lose a battle and find myself wounded there, he loves to tell me, this is who you are. So many times that I lose my divine identity. So your field is your O square and you own that field. And you know how you own that field? You have a battle cry and this is what it sounds like. See that picture behind me? Uh, it's a woman holding to the iron rod, a piece of fruit in her hand and she's standing by a tree. Okay, so our battle cry is stay by the tree. Stay by the tree. Where you're connected with the love of God, and um, you know where the nourishment is, the stuff that nourishes you and makes you stronger. So that fruit on that tree is a representation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his merciful um, uh, grace, his atonement. The power that he gives us through his atonement comes um, just through him and into us when we remember that it's real. I'm supposed to be in this. I'm supposed to be weak. I'm not supposed to know what to do with this or how to save that. Because uh, I'm not a savior. I'm just a mother. There's already a savior. So just remember, your own square is, I have a field. And my battle cry is, stay my tree. And at, on my field, I cling to the rod. I really depend on the word of God so I can thwart all the fiery darts of the adversary. And I also just search for and love being staying at the tree because when I feel the love of God, I know how to love that. That thing that makes me cry because when I'm on Satan's battlefield over there and I look at that, uh, I just, it makes me just sick. But when I'm on my field and I'm at the tree, and I'm eating fruit and filled with the love of God, 
I'm filled with the kind of perfect love that I can look at storms and know, hmm, I know who's in charge of that. It's not me. I'm just supposed to love the goodness in that, the person that I love in that. I'm supposed to see them and cheer for them and respect them and care for them and believe that the Savior is coming and he's already trying to save you. Um, but what you're doing over there that looks so messy and we don't know how to fix and it's taking a long time, uh, it's kind of normal, kind of normal. And um, I can't save it and I can't save you from it. I can't save you in it. Only one person can do that, that's the Savior. But I can support you. And I can do that while I'm available to God if I feel his love. Because fear, I need to overcome fear and perfect love casts out fear. So on my field, I have the rod that I'm clinging to. I need to know what God says about battles and how to win them. And that's in his instruction book. I need to know what God says about who I am and who God is for me. And that's in his instruction book. I need to hear how to be successful in storms. And that's in his instruction book. But I don't need to just hear it in Sunday school. I need to hear it in my soul. Because that keeps me at the tree. So that is your field. But we're going to learn more about that in class. But your field is huge. It's a big deal. Claim your field. And remember that your battle cry is, stay by the tree. Stay by the tree. We're going to learn about how to tell what it feels like when you're staying by the tree and how to tell what it feels like when you're being pulled off the battlefield and leaving the tree and how to help yourself to be like, oh, no, I want to be strong at the tree. The first M is my savior. And the O is own my field. And the second M in mom is my tree. My truth is so important. It's one of the biggest most important things that I defend. I defend my truth and I defend it from the adversary who tries to steal it. And this is the first place that I could start spinning out of control and leaving the tree and being unsafe. Because in my heart and in my mind is where the battle starts first. And the very first things that I start living is my personal truth that I matter, that I am a powerful weapon in God's great army. I'm like a secret weapon for his army, that Satan is very afraid of me. He knows what I could do for him, for people that I love and people that he loves. If I'm supporting his work in my truth, it's amazing. But if I'm trying to look at messes and I'm not in my truth, then I can't even be available to support his work. Super important. I have to know what my truth sounds like. I have to know when my head is telling me things that are not true about me or about my life or about situations in my life. I need to know what that is and I fight to keep that truth and to think it, to say it, and to act it. It takes a lot of courage, but it is so fun because it's the way, it's the area where we literally can say, uh-uh, not today, Satan. I'm going to kick your trash. You are leaving. Because uh, that is not my truth. So, and the P, the W, and the R, P stands for pray. And it literally is pray twice a day. And uh, the W stands for write. Write a letter to God every day. And that doesn't have to look like, wow, that's like a novel, whole page. Some women do art, crafts on their page for their letters to God that are just glorifying God and saying things and cutting out scriptures and pasting them right there. Uh, that's their letter. As they think about and consider what they're fighting for and be honest with him about strategizing about how to win their battles and, and just being authentic. Writing your letter to God is another form of prayer, and it can get us to a more sensitive, authentic place um, and slow down our will and open us more up to being more aligned with God's will. If you have never tried letters to God, don't discount it. Can know that usually the W square is the one that is most challenging for people 
because they think, huh, I already say a prayer. Why would I write another prayer with my hand? Um, so you're gonna notice that it's because the reason you think that is because the adversary knows. So when you start really thinking and listening because you've slowed down and you're really considering what you're saying, and you're combining your scriptures with that and your prayers with that. So they're all connected. Pretty soon. He knows the windows of heaven will open up and start telling you things. And he is only in here and stuff. It's cool. He only wants you to hear stinky things. So writing letters to God is worth your effort. Give it a shot and start little. Just do little things. Just do what makes sense to you. But whatever that looks like for you, it's fine. Okay, and then your R is read. Read words of the prophets, inspired things that have the spirit in them, things that are smarter than you, um, and read it with the purpose of hearing. Hearing what heaven wants you to hear, what God's trying to tell you. One of the reasons we have, we have this power calendar is because moms with power live their life. And they know that there's power in choosing with their agency. That's the, one of the greatest gifts of God is our ability to choose. Uh, just know mothers with power, they, they live their life. They don't let their life live them. So when we choose to live our life, we choose to see storms for what they are. We see them. Mm. That's normal. That means I'm doing something right if there's a storm in my life. When we do things on purpose and just lock in this mom power calendar, um, it fortifies us and helps us to stand strong in the storm. Peaceful as we watch the storm, look at it. We don't ever think, I'm not ignoring the storm. I'm super aware of the storm. Even more aware of it than I used to be because now I can see me in it in a new way. And I can see who God is. It is in it for me in an awesome way and because I can see those two things I can look at what used to cause me great uh, distress in the storm because it was about people I love things I care about now I can look at that and even believe hmm, that's really normal that's you just living the dream over there and I know that uh, there's a purpose in that storm and that God is in it and he's he's gonna say and I'm going to support. Thank you so much for being here in this great army of women who understand that there is power to claim. And moms need power. And they need to remember they have power. And when you're a mom, when you're a woman, you're an influencer. Um, you really literally, with your love and your goodness, can change the tide of battle in your home, in your heart, and in other people's lives, just because you can see things for what they really are and stay on your own field and notice how to win. Because you know now who you are with the Savior and what that feels like. Thank you so much for being strong. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>